Welcome to this video on fractions, starting with what is a fraction. Welcome back, and to a whole new topic area. I think we've done place value pretty much to death now. I'm sure there's a lot more we could do, but hopefully we'll cover it in other videos later on in this series, because place value is really, really important to maths. If you understand place value, if you understand number facts, if you understand decimal numbers, really, you should be able to do really, really well in maths. So changing topic slightly, Fractions. What is a fraction? Hmm. Well, later on in school, in year seven, what you tend to work out is that a fraction is something like this. It's one number, and then this line, and then another number. What does that actually mean? Well, possibly you all are aware that that actually stands for a half. But half of what? Well, I like to think of this line here, because actually it is, as a divide sign. It's like saying, I've got one thing, and I'm splitting it into two pieces. Or, I've got half, because if I've got one thing and splitting it into two, then hopefully we can have half each. If I have one divided by three, and the biggest hint I can give you in this whole video is that this line here does mean divide, then that means I've got one thing and I'm splitting it into three, all right? So we have a third. Now I can't help it in my head, what do I think all the time? I'm pretty much thinking pizza or cake because I love pizza and I love cake. In its basic form, that is what a fraction is. It's uh, like saying take something, take a cake and split it into pieces. And not all fractions have to have a one on top of it. So we could have two divided by five. That's like saying I've got two cakes and I'm splitting it into five equal pieces. Now that might become a bit harder to actually try and visualize, but the general idea. You can even have fractions with the numbers bigger on top than the bottom. That's really weird. I've got seven cakes and I'm splitting it between six people. Well, hopefully we'll get a cake and a bit each, which sounds really, really good. All right. And if you understand the basic idea that this line here is a divide by sign, it's secret code for divide by, and if you think of the top number as what you're starting with, and the bottom number of how many pieces you're going to split it up to, we should do all right. So let's have an example now. If I look at this picture here, what do I notice? Well, I could think of that as a bar of chocolate. And how many pieces does my bar of chocolate have? It has nine pieces. Hmm. How many pieces have I shaded in? Yep. One, two, three, four, five pieces have been shaded in. So that means I have five pieces out of nine which have been shaded, right? Well, hold on, that's not what I said earlier. I said that I had one thing split into two. Well, yep, that's definitely a way of thinking about it, but also I can think of a half as saying, I have one piece for every two pieces. Really? What do you mean? More on that a little bit later. It. But here, we'll think of this as saying, I've got five pieces out of nine. Ooh, another thing that maths calls this thing. So we've already worked out it's called a divide, but another way we think of this is the two words, out of. Yeah, so I can read this as five out of nine. I've got five pieces out of the nine. Hmm, is there another example we could use? Possibly, yes. Let's look at this one, right? Totally different shape. How many pieces have I got all together? I've got one, two, three, four pieces all together. But how many pieces are shaded? Just one. So I could say that I have one shaded piece out of four. And there we go, look at that, what's that? It's a fraction, yep, one out of four. What about if I wanted to find out the unshaded pieces? Oh, well, same thing, how many pieces aren't shaded? Well, three of them aren't shaded out of four that are there. And this one here, how many aren't shaded? Four aren't shaded out of the nine that are there. So we've got four out of nine. Three out of four. Now some fractions have names, and hopefully you're all aware that that is the same as a half. And this 
is the same as a quarter. All right. So when we deal with quarter of an hour, we know that that stands for 15 minutes, but also we can write it down as a quarter of an hour. Why? Well, if we look at our clock, bad picture of a clock, there is 12, there is three o'clock, there is six o'clock, there is nine o'clock. What we notice is we can split our clock into four equal pieces. The time between 12 and three, the time between three and six, the time between six and nine, and the time between nine and 12. Well, if I have this section here, then what have I got? I've got one section out of four or a quarter of an hour because I can split my clock up into quarters. Wow, we've done a lot here. What about if they give me a fraction? Well, this is where life is even more interesting. Say they gave me the fraction, uh, ooh, I don't know, one out of three, all right? One out of three or a third, all right? So this is called a third. Well, what does that actually mean? Well, it means that, well, uh, if I have one pizza, I get a third of it. So that means here is my pizza and I can split that into three equal pieces. If I had friends with me and I went to see, I went to Pizza Hut, that's how much I would expect to get. How awesome is that? Right? I get one third of that pizza. Mm. But it also stands for one in every three. Really? So I've now got it standing of one out of three, one in every three, one divided by three, one third. This math stuff is really, really confusing. Well, it's not because remember, maths is nothing more than a big fat trick, all right? It's just a trick. All of the words mean pretty much the same thing. It's just how you put them into a question. Here's an example. Imagine I have this shape here. We'll call it a bar of chocolate. Imagine I want to eat one third of that chocolate. One third, how on earth do I, well, right? I wanna color in how much of the chocolate I'm gonna eat. And this is where fractions become really, really awesome. Because what this says is, I'm going to eat one piece of chocolate out of every three pieces there are. One out of every three. What do you notice? Look, our diagram is split into rows of three pieces. In fact, it's got, in this diagram, six rows of three pieces. There are six rows. If I am going to eat one piece out of every three, then that means if this is a row of three, I am going to eat that piece there. And in this, I'm going to eat that piece there, and that piece there, and that piece there, and that piece there, and that piece there. And there we go. I have actually now shaded in one third of my diagram. Why? Because I have colored in one piece out of every three. Really? Well, yeah, let's try another example. What about if I now have two pieces out of every three? Well, look, every time I see three squares, I'm going to color in two of them. So there are three squares there. I'm going to color in two of them. And there are those threes there. And I'm going to color in two of them. And there, and there, and there, and there. Woo! So now, if I look at this shape, I can see that two thirds of it is colored in, All right? So two out of every three, All right? One more example. What about if I want to shade in eight out of 18? Well, how many squares are there altogether? There are 18 squares. And so once again, they're trying to trick us, but no, because we know that we are now gonna color in eight squares for every 18 there are. So there's three squares, there's another three squares, 
And if I just color in these two, all right, then I have now colored in eight out of 18. And they said that this fraction stuff was complicated. I don't think so. Now, we can use the same idea when we think about difficult questions. I'll, I'll show you an example of what could be a difficult question. One fifth of 20. Well, what does that mean? One fifth of 20. Well, let's imagine a block of chocolate with 20 pieces in it. And here is one. One fifth of 20. That's like saying, I want to eat one out of every five pieces. All right, so I've got 20 pieces and I want to eat one out of every five. Well, there's lots of ways we can do this. Firstly, we can look at drawing our diagram. Look, there we go, there's a diagram. Now you might turn around and say to me, oh, but I don't have any fives. You, you told me, uh, Maths Guru, to look at rows. Well, I've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Ah, you do. But what about if we look here? Ah, I have groups of five here. So I've got one group of five, two groups of five, three groups of five, four groups of five. And remember that one out of five is the same as saying color in one for every five. So I'm going to color in this one. That's a group of five, and I'm going to color in that one as a group of five, and I'm going to color in that one as a group of five, and I'm going to color in that one as a group of five. And there we go. I have now shaded in one fifth of 20. How many pieces have I shaded in? Yep, I have shaded in four. So one fifth of 20 is equal to four. Yee. But is there another way we can think about this? Absolutely, yes there is. Um, one fifth of 20. Well, if I was to work out a half of 20, we hopefully would all know that that would be equal to 10. Hmm, how did we do that? Well, a half of 20 is like saying, well, 20 divided by 2, because that's also 10. Ah, so if I do a half of 20, that's the same as divided by 2. So what could be a fifth of 20? So one fifth of 20 could be exactly the same as 20 divided by 5. And absolutely, that is equal to 4. And we know that that is equal to 4. Oh, this is pretty cool. So 1 fifth of 20 is the same as 20 divided by 5. What would 1 tenth of 20 be? Yep, 20 divided by 10, which is 2. This is pretty awesome. So does that mean that uh, ooh, 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 two fifths of 20, uh, how do I do that? How do I do two fifths of 20? Well, we know that one fifth of 20 is the same as 20 divided by five, which is four. So if one fifth of 20 is four, then two fifths, which must be twice as much, must equal eight. Now there's a lot going on here and there's a lot of mass involved, right? But the general idea about fractions is think of them as slices of pizza. Think of them as slices of cake. Think about them as blocks of chocolate, right? As I did here. Remember, I went back. When I wanted a fifth of 20, I thought to myself, well, what would happen if I had a block of chocolate with 20 pieces in it? And I wanted one piece for myself for every five pieces of the chocolate. All right? So just by coloring it in, we got the answer as four. All right? This is a quick introduction to fractions. There's more to come soon.